Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video in which you will learn how you can implement deep links in your app with the new Jetpack Compose type safe navigation. Specifically, what you will learn to build is an app like this, where we have a home screen and a detail screen, and we can only get to the detail screen via a deep link. So in case you're not aware, a deep link is in the end just a link that links to a very specific screen of your app, which can trigger from various common places, for example, a notification, as you can see. So when we open our app, a notification will show, and when we click this notification, we will get to our detail screen while passing some type of argument. And these arguments, like the sample ID here, will be passed with a new type safe navigation. So this will be one common use case of where we need deep links, where we want to just open a specific screen of our app from a notification, or where we might want to open a specific screen of our app from another app. But sometimes you also want to open a specific screen of your app when the user visits your browser URL. So let's imagine the YouTube app, for example, where we can, of course, also watch YouTube videos in our mobile browser. But since the YouTube app was specifically built to watch videos on a mobile device, what you will likely happen is when you enter the URL for a very specific YouTube video that the app will open instead. And the mechanism behind this is also a deep link. So if we go here in our device browser, it's an older device, API level 28, only has a web view. But if we then go in here, open, in this case, my URL together with some kind of ID, let's say 50, we, we click browse and then our browser will automatically deep link to our app while passing our ID that we've passed in the URL. And this is of course just an example. This could be the video ID for a YouTube video, which the YouTube app can then load or any type of data you just need in order to display what you want to display. To get started, you need to make sure to add a few dependencies and libraries, which I've already done. You can also just clone the initial branch of this GitHub repository from down below, which uses uh, Kotlin 2.0, as well as the uh, type safe navigation compose library and Kotlin serialization, and then also also already applies all that here, I think, except for the serialization plugin. So you have the serialization Kotlin library, the navigation library, um, and up here, I am just lacking the serialization compiler plugin, which I've just noticed. So let's quickly apply this as well. Plugins, JetBrains, Kotlin, serialization, and that's it. We can hit sync now, and then we are ready to implement our very basic two screen setup here by just going to our main activity here inside of our scaffold and we add our nav host. So um, this video won't be about the type safe navigation specifically uh, that I already have a separate video about, but this will be specifically about how you use this new type safe navigation and implement deep links with it. So we first need a nav controller in which we need to just navigate between screens, uh, which we can get with remember, uh, remember nav controller. We then need a nav host, which hosts all of our screens while using our nav controller reference. We don't want, don't want to pass a graph, but rather start destination. For which you first of all now need to declare the start destination. The way this works with a new type safe navigation is just with um, Kotlin serialization serializables. So that means we can, for example, declare a data object for our home screen which we simply annotate with serializable. So this would make up a route, a single screen without any specific arguments like an ID. For our second screen, for the detail screen, we do want to have arguments that will also be the screen we deep link to. So here we want to use a data class instead. So we can also pass arguments to this route, to this screen. Let's call this a uh, deep link screen, pass our integer ID, and also make sure that this is serializable. You can of course, uh, pass more arguments by just extending this data class. Well, uh, then the start destination will be our home screen, so we can just pass it here, home screen. And inside this nav host, we can then come up with our two composable blocks or two screens uh, where we can define the content of each screen on the one hand for our home screen and on the other hand for our deep link screen. So let's think through how this should happen. The first thing when our home screen opens, the first thing we want to do is we want to show a notification, which will then deep link to our detail screen. But in order to show a notification, we need two things. First of all, on the one hand, a notification channel. And on later API levels, we also do need to request notification permission. So we want to hop into our Android manifest up here, make sure to specify users permission, post notifications, and we can then go to our root package, declare an application class in which we will also request, um, not request, but create the notification channel. So we will call this, I don't know, deep link application or so, something that relates to the name of your app. This will be an application in which 
we override on create. So this will be called once we launch our app and we can then have a private function to create the notification channel. This is just something every notification needs to be sent into starting from I think Android Oreo or so. So we can declare this here channel is equal to notification channel where we give this channel an ID, like some kind of generic channel ID. Um, in a real app, I would give this a, a name that also provides context on what kind of types of notifications you send into this channel. So this this I would choose for the actual name since that uh, the user would also see. For this app, the notifications aren't really important and rather just serve as a way to uh, demonstrate the deep links. So we just pass channel name and the importance will be notification manager importance default. We can then get a reference to this notification manager to create this channel. Notification manager is equal to get system service. Let's use this overload that doesn't take any arguments, but rather just a generic notification manager. We can make sure that's not null. And then we can use this manager to create the notification channel with our just created channel. Let's also actually bump up our minimum SDK to uh, 26. I would say that's completely fine nowadays to um, not support everything down to 24 anymore, but rather 26. So let's go to our build.gradle file, change this to 26, and then sync this. And then we should also get rid of the error here. All right, so we can then take this function, call it here and create to make sure that this notification channel is definitely created. And then the next function we can right here is to really show the notification when we launch our app. So show notification like this. And we can then construct this notification here, which we can do with notification notification.compat.builder. This will take in the context where we can just pass this application reference and the channel ID, which again has to be the same one as we specified up here. We can then give this a small icon for which we can just pass a resource ID. So Arda drawable IC launcher Background, for example, we can give this a title, uh, set content title, like app launched. We can give this a description with set content text, like tap to open deep link. We can give this a priority, which could be a priority, actually um, notification compat priority max. So we make sure that we definitely see this notification we can set auto cancel to true, so it will disappear once we click on it. And now the interesting part is, how do we achieve that when we click on this notification that we will really open up our deep link screen? So first of all, in order to respond to notification clicks, what we need is a so-called content intent. So that is nothing else than a pending intent, which we can use to define what happens when we click this notification. And a pending intent always wraps a normal intent, which we can then use to send something to a specific activity. We could send something to a specific broadcast receiver to trigger something in that broadcast receiver. We could launch a service, anything we might want to use an intent for. In this case, we of course want to launch an activity. So our main activity, the only one we have in our project. So let's define our activity intent. Activity intent, which is just a normal intent, the package context is just this and the activity you want to launch is a main activity double colon class to Java. If we then want to construct the pending intent out of this activity intent, we can say, okay, well, pending intent is equal to task stack builder from Android X core app dot create from context. And then we call that apply. Because here you want to call at next intent with parent stack where we pass in our activity intent. And then we call get pending intent where we pass zero as the request code and pending intent dot flag immutable as the flags. And this should actually be run. So what happens here? First of all, we create our normal intent, which will just resolve to our activity or main activity will receive this. And we can then use this normal intent to construct our pending intent. We use this task stack builder in order to just make sure that the um, back stack will be properly preserved. We make sure to uh, just add our activity intent here to this task stack builder and then finally return this get pending intent. So the, the resulting pending intent out of that. And since that's the last line of this run block, this is what will be returned. The request code we don't care about here, and the flag immutable is just something we need for every single pending intent, starting from some kind of API level at least, which makes sure that the pending intent can't be mutated anymore. If we then pass this to our content intent function, and we also call that build here, we can now use this notification to show that with our notification manager. So we can say notification manager is get system service, notification manager, make sure that's not null because every Android device has a notification manager and then we can use this 
to call notify with a specific ID, which we can give the notification like just one and passing in the notification. We then also want to take this function and call it here from on create. And now in order to test this, we of course also need to request permission. I will use a very simple uh, permission handling setup here, which will uh, just assume that we approve the permission. So let's go to, let's actually create a separate screen for that, like home screen in our root package, make that a file composable home screen. Um, in here, we can then just have a box or so where we say, okay, modifier, fill the whole uh, size of our screen, actually make this depend on the modifier we pass. And we want to make sure that the content alignment is centered. So all of our content inside the box will be centered. Now, if we still have to request a permission, which is only necessary from API level uh, S onwards. So we want to check that if build that version SDK end is at least build dot version SDK, uh, no, build dot version codes as actually tiramisu, not um, Android S, sorry. If this is the case, I want to show a button. When we click this button, we want to start requesting permission. We can give this a text with request permission and else if we already got permission or if we don't even need to request it, we will just show a center text that says home screen. Well, we also need a state now or rather actually just um, a variable here, whether we have permission or not, as permission is equal to context compat that check self permission, pass in local context that current as the context, and the permission you want to check for is manifest permission post notifications. If that is equal to package manager dot permission granted, we know we have permission. This check only is to be done on um, from API level 33 onwards, as you can see. So we can also cut this out here. Check again if we are on version SDK int at least tiramisu, our version codes tiramisu. And then we will resolve this to our permission check. And otherwise, we will just say, OK, we have permission. Now we can take this value, use it here. So if we don't have permission, and we are on that API level where we have to request it, we will show the button and otherwise just our home screen text. And also requesting this permission now is pretty easy with a so-called activity result launcher. You can call this permission launcher. Remember launcher for activity result. Here we need to pass in a contract which just defines what we want to do. So which activity we want to launch for which result, which we can get here with activity result contracts request permission. So you can see here tons of different actions and tasks you might want to uh, launch an activity for. In this case, we want to request a single permission. And here we then get is granted, which you can use to actually we do need a state. <laughs> Let's cut this out and make this a var by remember and put this in here. And then each of these values also needs to be wrapped into a mutable state or we just wrap this whole thing into a mutable state, something like this. And then we can alt enter to import get value, alt enter again. And we also need to extract this context out of this remember block, put it up here, something like this, and then we can reference it in here. Now we have that as a compose state, so we can react to changes in our compose UI. In here, we can then set pass permission to is granted. And when we then click our button, we can fire our permission launcher with the manifest permission post notifications. Sadly, a lot we have to do here in order to just show a simple notification, um, but that is necessary in order to demonstrate deep linking. And I also don't want to skip this part in case you might be a bit new to how all that works. So you get to see the whole picture. But what we now want to do is want to take this home screen composable. We want to go to our main activity where our nav host is. And here we want to call this. So home screen is composable in here. And lastly, we want to also take this inner padding, which we apply to our nav host. So we just make sure that nothing is overlapping the status bar. So all right, let's try this for now here again on my pixel device. I will take a look in here. This is still the old app. Here on this API level, we don't yet need um, notification permission. You can see the screen is showing, but for some reason, we are not seeing the notification. And that is because I haven't registered the application class in the manifest, I am noticing. So let's switch to the manifest. Here we have to specify a name, deep link application, and because otherwise, this won't be linked to our app. Let's relaunch this and then this should work. There we go. 
we do see our notification. And if we now minimize this, click this, we will notice something interesting that, well, our app opens, but not our detail screen. Of course, on the one hand, because we haven't yet added this deep link detail screen here to our nav host, but we also didn't really specify that we want to open this detail screen with our notification. So when we click on this notification, because in here, we just specified that we want to open this activity with our pending intent. So in here, there is no information about which specific screen to open with this. And now we come to how deep links really work because in the end, those are nothing else than URLs. And the way this works with intents is that we can go in here, specify an also block or rather an apply block, that's a bit easier. And in here, we can then specify this data, which is a URI. And a URI can be a URL. So what we can do is we can set this data to, for example, HTTPS pl-coding.com. So that's my URL. You can, of course, use whatever kind of URL you have or which one you want to associate with your specific app. And then we say dot to URI. What we also need to specify is the arguments of that deep link that we now want to pass. Because if you remember, here in our main activity, we do expect our deep link screen to receive an ID, which is an integer that's not notable. And this integer, this ID, of course, has to be resolved from the URL that we pass. And for that, you still have to kind of know the older structure of how composed navigation routes were constructed. Those are really nothing else than URLs, or at least very similar. So if we go in here, and if we have a mandatory argument like this ID, which can't be null, then we would just append it here with um, a slash and then the ID, for example, 50, 87, whatever kind of ID the user clicked on. Of course, in your app, you would then dynamically adjust this depending on what type of screen the notification should lead to. If you would also have an optional argument, then you would need to specify this with question mark at the end and then optional is equal to whatever kind of value you have here, for example, 35. So this would assume that you would also have an optional argument here, which is a nullable integer. If you don't pass this, then this will remain null. In this case, we don't have that. We only have this ID. So if we now go to our main activity in the nav host and add a little deep link screen, just a little box or so, where we say modifier fill max size. And we center everything in here and we can show a text with the ID is, well, what is our ID? How do we now retrieve this in our deep link screen? In order to do that, we need to also register this deep link screen as a screen that receives specific deep links. So here we can open these parentheses and specify deep links where we just have a list of deep links because the screen could possibly um, be open from multiple different deep links. And in here, we can then have these nav deep links. And this is now the new part of all the type safe navigation where you previously had to specify the um, base path with all the different arguments that your deep link screen could receive and with all the different types of the arguments that it received. But we can now just say we have a nav deep link where we specify the destination, so our deep link screen. And then we can specify the base path in here. And it seems like I'm having the, the wrong overload, nav deep link, is it this one? And then here, uh, not in curly braces, but in null parentheses, we can specify the base path, which is, well, the base path of our URL. So without any arguments, or we can say HTTPS, and we can also maybe create a little constant for that. Let's do that up here. Const val deep link URL or so, or let's call it deep link domain. That's more specific since I just want to make this equal to PL coding, so my domain. We then take this, reference it down here. So deep link, oops, deep link domain. And that's already everything we need to specify here for this deep link because this deep link screen class will contain all the references, all the information the screen needs to know. So it knows what types of arguments it receives because uh, the, the deep link screen class receives these arguments here. So if we now want to get access to these arguments when we navigate, when we deep link to our deep link screen, then we do get that from the backstack entry, which we have access to inside this composable block. So to get our ID on the screen, we can say it, so the backstack entry dot to route, which is the new function from this type safe navigation, or we can now specify the specific route. So the um, serializable class that the screen consists of to get an instance of this class. If we just want the ID, we can refer to its ID. And then we can also pass this ID down here to display it on that screen. Let's also use this constant here in our deep link application, by the way, at this point, 
deep link domain. And now we can relaunch this to see how this will behave now. And there we go on our home screen. If we now minimize this and click on our notification, we still see our home screen. So why is that? Well, there is one more concept you have to learn about in order to understand how um, deep links work. Because what we still haven't done yet is we haven't defined an intent filter. An intent filter is something we have to define in our manifest, or we, we can at least define in our manifest if we know about this intent filter during development and we want, don't want to dynamically declare it, for example. You can see there is already an intent filter key in the manifest, but that is nothing else than just a filter for incoming intents. And what we do here in our deep link application is we send an incoming intent. So with this filter, we now have to declare the specific types of intents that our main activity is expected to receive. So what we now need to declare on the manifest is, hey activity, you should receive intents that have a URL with this specific pattern. And we do this here in our activity tag by declaring a new intent filter. We can have a data tag where we specify the host on the one hand. So this will be PL coding.com. We can close this off here. You typically also want to have one variant of that with www since that is considered a different host and otherwise I don't think it would open the um, the app if the user would prepend www. So you want to register both these hosts here for our link and what we need is we need to specify the scheme. So that is that the protocol HTTPS, HTTP, but you could even invent your own scheme, which in that case would only work if you manually open the deep link uh, from a notification or so, but not from a browser, of course. But in our case, we have a normal HTTPS scheme, which you can pass here. What else do we need? Well, we want to have a category with a name which will be default on the one hand. So this means that the, this deep link can be registered as the default action so that our app will be the default app that opens for these links. What we also want is the browsable category, which will register this deep link to be openable from a web browser. So when the user um, opens our specific URL with a specific um, slash ID, that this will open in our app. And lastly, we need an action which is uh, which, which just describes what we want to do with this intent, which is action view. So we just want to view content, we want to view our second screen or deep link screen. Now that we did this, let's relaunch this one last time. And now that should hopefully work. You can see our home screen. We minimize this. If we click this notification, then, oh no, we, we still get to the home screen. And that is because I've missed the .com here. That is, of course, part of our domain. Um, let me try that again, but I think that should be the issue. Okay, there we are on our home screen. Minimize this, click the notification, and we still see the home screen. <laughs> okay, all right. I must have been blind for some reason, but here I actually appended the .com, uh, but I didn't do that in the main activity where we've registered this deep link domain. So here the .com wasn't included in the domain name, but in our deep link application it was. So uh, we actually had a double .com. Sorry for that. Let's relaunch this, <laughs> hopefully one last time. We see our home screen, we minimize this, open the deep link, and yes, now it finally opens in our detail screen with our ID being equal to 87. Let's also try this in our browser by going to our web view, which still resolves to our old app. Um, let me actually delete the old app so the deep links aren't conflicting or so. Uninstall like this. And here in our web view, let's destroy this, create a new web view. And we navigate to plcoding.com and let's say we pass four as the ID. If we do this, then we do get the option to um, link to our deep linking guide type safe navigation, which is the app that we've just built. We can select this say, okay, I want to always open this as the default action. And if we do this, then we do see our deep link screen with the ID being equal to four. Well, I wish I could tell you that's it. That's everything you need to consider, but there's actually one more catch and that is related to later API levels. Um, so there was a reason I'm always trying this out here on API level 28, which is quite old at this point. The latest one is API level 35. So if we uh, ch check an emulator running on 35, we run our app on that one, you will notice um, that on the one hand, we will see our permission request here. We can hit allow and we do see our home screen. We can relaunch this to also see the uh, notification. There we go. 
If we minimize this, then this should work just fine. Yes, we can open our deep link screen from the notification. But the thing is, if you want to do this from a browser, this won't work on API levels. I think starting from 33, because Android or rather Google has uh, added the requirement to verify your app's deep links. So that means you have to kind of prove that you are really the owner of that domain. And the way this works, we can see here in the Android doc to see verify Android app links. So what Google expects from you is on the, on the one hand that you set this auto verify attribute to true in your intent filters. That is something we can easily do here in our manifest by going to our intent filter and saying auto verify is true. But the more important part is that if we scroll down a little bit to here where we declare the website association, so where we associate our app with our website, you have to take this piece of code, um, of course, adjusted based on your app. So you need to um, pass in your package name, you need to generate your SHA 256 fingerprint, which is kind of a, a unique fingerprint of your app, you have to paste this here and then make this available on your server at uh, where is that here. Um, at your domain slash well-known slash asset links that Jason. So this is the URL that um, Android will try to fetch in to just verify your deep link. And if it can find the specific file with your specific app signature, then it will consider that a verified deep link and will automatically open your app when the user visits a URL that matches the intent filter. Remember, this is only necessary if you want your users to be able to open your app from a browser. If you just want them to open the app from a notification or from another app or so where you explicitly create the deep link and then fire it, then this is not necessary. So just be aware of that because by default it won't work. You would need to put this file on your server. Um, but after that, Android will consider it a verified deep link and it will also open that up here in your app. So as you can see, there aren't that many changes, but a very cool change of this type safe navigation is uh, that we don't need to specify all those different arguments here for the deep links anymore. And we can easily just get these arguments with uh, it.2 route here in our deep link screen. Down below, you will find a link to more advanced Android premium courses. And other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one, hopefully. And uh, I wish you an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.